Hey guys, this is a quick video to go through a few examples of how to make HTTP GET requests from React using the Fetch API. The examples are from this post that I'll link to in the video description. We'll go through each of the examples and run it in a local project to see how it works. First, fetching data from a React class-based component, then from a React hooks component, then using async await, then with error handling, and finally with setting HTTP headers. The API URL used returns a list of React packages available in NPM, along with the total number, which will display in the UI. Okay, let's get started. So this is our barebones React project, where we have a single app component, and it just displays a title at the moment. And I have it running in the browser over here. So we can get started with the first example up here which calls fetch from within the component did mount lifecycle hook of the React class component. So if we paste that into our app component, we can see that it is fetching our URL, which returns a promise. Uh, the promise returns a response object, which uh, we can then call .json on, which uh, then returns another, another promise object to get the body of the response, and uh, that's how we get the actual data out of the response body. And then we're calling this.setState, and we're setting a local total React packages component state property to the dot, uh, total property returned from the API. If I jump over to the browser quickly, I can show you exactly what gets returned from the API. There's our total property there. So jumping back, so data.total, we're going to assign the total React packages. So first of all, we need a state property for total React packages. So we'll set this.state equals total React packages, initialize it to null. Next, we actually want to render it in the UI. down here, put in a label, total react packages. Okay, and that should be all we need to do. Uh, that should have automatically refreshed. And there we have our, the total number that was returned from the API. And if I open the dev tools, and refresh, we can see that that URL has been hit and the total being returned is being displayed up here. Okay, moving on to our next example is using a React hooks component. Okay, so going back into VS Code, let's now convert our app class based component into a React hooks component. I won't go too much into the details of how React hooks components can uh, work. Um, because there's plenty online about that and this uh, video is more about making HTTP requests so I'll just do the conversion and um, you can find out about that stuff uh, separately online so in order to keep the video quick so I use the use state hook to create uh, local state variables I use effect hook for making HTTP request to replace component div mount. I'll create local state property total react packages and set total react packages with the use state hook initializing the value to null. Make the constructor. Uh, we can blow away component div mount now and copy our use effect hook from the example. Paste that in there. So a use effect hook, as I've uh, described here in the comment, that if you pass a 
empty array as the second parameter to the user effect hook. It only runs once when the when a component mounts, which makes it behave just like a component did mount in a class-based component. So the fetch is exactly the same as it was, other than instead of this dot set state, we're calling set total react packages, um, and down um, instead of calling render, we simply return from our function component and. That should be everything we need to do. And I'll change the label so we know we can see the UI that it's been updated. Alright, and there's our updated value and our updated component now using a use effect hook, so doing a fetch request from a React hooks component. Alright, moving on to the next example using async await. The example in the posts is using a class-based component, but uh, I'll just continue with our React hooks component that we've got. Um, it'll be a very minor difference. So going back to a project. So in order to change from using promises with dot then callbacks, we can change our containing function to be to be an async function and then we can use the await keyword so we can say const response equals await fetch and then const data Await response step missing. And then set total react packages like that. And then again, I'll update the label so we can see in the UI that it's changed because the data returned from the API is the same. Okay, that's done. So now we're returning, doing a fetch with async await. That's how we do that. Moving to the next example. Okay, now we're going to build in error handling into our into our fetch request. So I'll copy this over first and then explain it once it's in uh, once it's in our project. Anymore. Again, the original uh, example was in a component div mount. It's uh, fine that it's in a use effect instead. All right. Now to demonstrate error handling, instead of Passing the URL to get the number of React packages, I've changed it to an invalid URL. And also, the and I've added a catch block here that sets an error message state property and logs the error out to the console. Now, rather than using set state here, I'll need to change this to using a the React hooks way of setting state. So I'll change that quickly now. State.
Okay. Uh, now what's going on in here is that the fetch API by uh, natively will throw an error if there's a network exception. So if there's a problem connected to the server, but if there's a HTTP response error returned, like a 400 or 500 error, it uh, won't throw an error. So fetch will return successful and will fall into the, the then block. The way to check for a HTTP response error is to check the OK property of the response. Now in that case, I want to still fall into our catch block. So what I'm doing is I'm checking the res if the response is not OK then getting the error message either from the response body or if there isn't one I'm defaulting to the response status text and then returning a rejected promise which with the with the error message and uh, that will fall into this catch block which will then set the error message and finally we want to display that error message in the UI so I'll add that down here that. Okay, we can see that our error has come back and we can see our invalid URL has got a 404 error, specified endpoint does not exist, and in our console there was an error, so that was logged in in our catch block as well. Uh, finally, uh, we'll set some HTTP headers on our request. So the way you set HTTP headers is just by passing a headers object with key value pairs as a second parameter to fetch. So I'll simply pass in a content type application JSON. Actually, I'll change that to a custom header so we can see it uh, more clearly in the dev tools of the um, of the browser. And I'll add that up here. So const headers. JSON test one two three pass that as second parameter to fetch and if we jump back to the dev tools it's still a failed request as expected but we should see in our headers there we go. That's our custom header. JSON test one two three. Okay, that's all our examples. Um, that's how you make get requests from React using the Fetch API. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see some more, uh, please subscribe to my channel below. Okay, cheers.